Children are the future. They are the next generation. But this future can easily be put at risk. How? By the various respiratory disorders that affect children. Respiratory infections include a variety of problems, like cold, flu, runny nose, cough, and sore throat. Many times these run a long course and become chronic, affecting the breathing system, causing what we all fear, asthma, pneumonia, tuberculosis. So what are these respiratory infections? How do they affect our children? And how do we know their seriousness? These are a few of the questions that we need to answer in order to protect our future generation. Let us see how. The first year of a child's life is very critical. Since the child is in the phase of developing immunity, he is easily susceptible to infections. Most children will develop at least six to eight colds or other respiratory illnesses a year. This number may be even higher in children who attend daycare. Let us first understand the respiratory system. For better understanding, the respiratory system may be divided into two sections, the upper and the lower. The upper respiratory tract includes the nose, nasal cavity, sinuses, larynx, while the lower respiratory tract consists of trachea, sub lungs made up of airways, termed as bronchi, and bronchioles, which end into air sacs called alveoli. Now that we have a clear picture of our lungs, let us understand the various respiratory infections that threaten our children, acute as well as chronic. Let us begin with the common cold, which leads to more doctor visits and absences from school and work than any other illness every year. Your child is suffering from a bout of cold. Check for the following symptoms. In the case of infants, the baby is unable to sleep, congestion in the nose, fever. Treatment and care begins at home first. It is important to maintain good hygiene, which includes washing of hands frequently, avoiding contact with people already suffering from a cold, not smoking in front of the child as it causes irritation of air passages, giving the child lots of fluids to avoid dehydration, and using saline drops in the nose and decongestants to avoid discomfort. We come across many disease conditions brought on by allergies. But what are these allergies, and how do we get rid of them and protect our children? Let us find out. An acute infection we come across in children is sinusitis. Sinusitis is an inflammation of the sinuses, which are cavities or air-filled pockets near the nasal passages. This inflammation usually comes after a bout of cold or is an allergic reaction. The symptoms of sinusitis are not much different from the common cold, except for severe headaches, tender sinuses accompanied by fever, sore throat, and a long-standing cold. Treatment usually includes antibiotics, decongestants, antihistamines, analgesics, and use of a nasal spray. The severity of the infection may be investigated by doing sinus x-rays, computed tomography, and cultures from sinuses. One of the acute respiratory diseases is allergic rhinitis. This illness is brought on by airborne irritants or allergens that trigger the release of histamine. causing inflammation and fluid production in the fragile linings of nasal passages, sinuses, and eyelids. This may be caused by weather changes or may last throughout the year. In such infections, prevention plays a major role. Environmental controls such as air conditioning during pollen season is advisable. Avoiding areas where there is heavy dust, mites, molds, and avoiding pets help keep away these allergens. Another common infection we come across in children 
is tonsillitis. Tonsillitis and pharyngitis are infections of the throat and are caused by bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites as well. The main symptoms include sore throat, fever, either low grade or high, decrease in appetite, not feeling well, vomiting. Flu is what we all dread in children, and this flu, medically called influenza, is a highly contagious viral infection of the respiratory system, which includes the nose, bronchial tubes, and lungs. It shows its presence by causing high fever, muscle aches, sore throat, and non-productive cough, mainly seen during the winter season. As there is no cure for influenza, the goal of treatment is to help prevent or decrease the severity of symptoms, which includes taking lots of liquids, bed rest, along with antivirals and analgesics for a quick recovery. One of the most life-threatening respiratory diseases that mainly affect infants and young children is whooping cough, also called pertussis. Caused by a bacterium, it is characterized by paroxysms, intense fits, spells of coughing that end with the characteristic whoop as air is inhaled. Whooping cough has been a cause of thousands of deaths, but with the advent of the pertussis vaccine, the rate of death has declined dramatically. Bronchitis is yet another inflammation of the airways affecting bronchi caused by viruses. It increases production of mucus, slight fever with chills, body ache, and sore throat, and rarely requires antibiotics. When viruses affect the bronchioles, especially respiratory syncytial virus, RSV, it is termed as bronchiolitis, and antibiotics rarely work in this kind of infection. Supportive treatment is the best way to recovery. Now that we have gone through the acute infections of the respiratory system in children, let us understand the chronic infections like asthma, pneumonia, and tuberculosis. Asthma is a chronic inflammatory disease in which the airways become sensitive to allergens, which are substances that trigger an allergic reaction. Because of these allergens, the lining of the airways gets swollen and inflamed. The muscles that surround the airways tighten up and the production of mucus is increased, causing the airways to become narrow. This makes it difficult for air to go in and out of your child's lungs, causing the symptoms of asthma. Coughing, either constant or intermittently. Wheezing. This is a whistling sound that may be heard while your child is breathing. Chest tightness. Your child may say his or her chest hurts or does not feel good. In order to manage asthma, it is important to identify the trigger factors and avoid them. These can be pollen, mold, animal dander, urine, oil from skin, house dust, dust mites, cockroaches, and certain foods. Irritants like strong odors and sprays, perfumes, household cleaners, cooking fumes, paints and varnishes, chemicals such as coal, chalk dust, or talcum powder, air pollutants, changing weather conditions, including changes in temperature, barometric pressure, humidity, and strong winds, chemical exposure on the job, such as occupational vapors, dust, gases or fumes, cigarette or tobacco smoke, and exercise. These all act as trigger factors. Asthma means no fun and games. This is just a myth. It is important for your growing child to know what triggers his asthma attack and tell his friends. In addition, the child should continue taking the asthma medication. Asthma is caused by various allergens, but when bacteria and viruses fill the lungs with pus, it causes serious infection of the lungs and is then diagnosed as pneumonia. If your child develops fever with chills and complaints of chest or stomach pain, vomiting, headache, not feeling well, these symptoms must be confirmed by chest x-ray and blood tests 
in order to diagnose pneumonia. Treatment once again is supportive with medications and at times hospitalization may also be required. The last but not the least dangerous of all diseases in children is tuberculosis. A chronic bacterial infection of the lungs, a contagious disease that spreads through the air, but repeated exposure to the germs is usually necessary before a child will become infected. The symptoms include fever with chills and sweating, presence of enlarged lymph nodes, and a cough not responding to the usual cough medications and loss of weight. To confirm tuberculosis, a skin test is carried out. In this test, a small amount of non-infectious testing material derived from the TB bacterium is injected into the top layer of the skin. If a certain size bump develops within two or three days, the test may be positive for tuberculosis infection. Additional tests will then include x-rays and sputum tests. Once confirmed that your child is suffering from tuberculosis, treatment includes isolation with short-term hospitalization and medications which may last for six months or more to be effective. This, in brief, sums up most of the respiratory disorders that we come across in children. Remember, children are our future. They are a gift from God. Let us keep this gift healthy and secure.